This week, we talk about the ultimate job site coffee machine and meeting its ultimate end. And our Aussie buddies show off another Bosch tool you can't have. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool. Pro tools, pro service, all of the best prices at ohiopowertool.com. And Skillsaw, true to the trade since 1924. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. It's January 15th, 2021, and we've got a lot to talk about on today's show. Before we get to that, if you're already a fan, do us a favor and hit that like button. Up first, the Festool Dumb Mill has always been a capable, convenient, and seriously expensive solution for woodworking joinery. And pocket holes have been a capable, convenient, and seriously cheap solution. This week, Wes from West Hampshire Woodworking wanted to know which solution was best. There are a lot of differences between a domino mortise and tenon joint and pocket hole screws. Clearly mortise and tenons are going to be hidden and while pocket holes can be hidden, it's kind of a pain. And a good domino joint can be used to perfectly align two pieces as well. But Wes was more curious about the strength of each joint, so he decided to put the two options through a stress test, which as it turns out, is insanely stressful to watch. Waiting for the bucket to <laughs> drop was almost too much. Anyways, I've always assumed a mortise and tenon was a stronger joint than a couple of pocket hole screws. Was I right? Head over to West Hamstra on YouTube to find out. Every tool fan eventually needs storage and heavy duty shelves are a must. This week we purchased this new Husky 10,000 pound steel shelf to help us store some of our extra tools and it's working great. And as it turns out, Clint from Tool Review Zone bought the exact same shelves on the exact same day, but his experience was not the same. Clint brought home his shelves with the same exact expectations we had, but they were quickly squashed by literal hours of struggle. Parts didn't fit, sections were warped, and nothing seemed right. After banging on it with a hammer for a while, he finally gave up and shared his many frustrations with the rest of us. After a lot of commenters claimed to have good experiences with it, he decided to take it back and try a new one. While at Home Depot, he even noticed that their floor model was just as warped as his. Clint made a follow-up video showcasing his new one and had a much better experience. He did, however, point out how poorly the shelves were packed, which would likely lead to more lemons. So, if you're in the market for some great-looking heavy-duty shelves, you can get them at your Home Depot for less than 200 bucks. Just be sure to check the box for damage first. For his full and entertaining review, head over to Tool Review Zone on YouTube. Our favorite Aussies are back showing off more tools that they can buy in Australia, but we can't buy here in the States. This time, Rob's favorite miter saw design, the Bosch Axial Glide. Yes, please. Except this one is cordless. The Bosch GCM18V12 GDC Surgeon Glide Saw is a 12-inch dual compound miter saw that features Bosch's popular axial glide design. But this time, it's powered by their latest core 18-volt batteries and boasts the new Bosch Bi-Turbo standard that provides advanced communication between their brushless motors and high-end lithium-ion batteries for increased performance and efficiency, which is similar to the Milwaukee's Red Link Plus. Mike and Dwayne are thrilled with the saw's power and accuracy, but at a price of over $1,000 US, it's more than a tad expensive. And at 60 pounds, it's not exactly the most portable of portable saws. There's a lot more to this tool, and for that, head over to Oz Tool Talk on YouTube. I don't care how much it costs or how much it weighs. I want two or six or five of them. Five I don't know. Six. Five would be fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, let's talk tools. Last week's discussion was about combination tools like the Shopsmith and Ridges Job Max. In the comments, several people showed support for my Makita Coffee Robot Butler and a lot of love was shared for the Rigid Job Max. I asked you guys to suggest a few more multi-tool designs you'd like to see and you came up with some good ones. Jagger Cogheart wants a work light jacket, which I could totally see working like this. Shadow's Edge suggested an MX Fuel demolition breaker and two inch impact wrench combo so you can, quote, break up concrete and then change a flat tire on the concrete truck that shows up to pour the new stuff. Who hasn't been there, am I right? But my favorite came from Michael Cassidy, who suggested Milwaukee should merge a circular saw with a track of some kind. Genius. Now for this week's Tool Talk, we're going to discuss coffee on the job site. 
specifically the Ox Coffee Box Rugged Coffee Maker, which used to be wildly popular among tradespeople on Instagram, but suddenly closed their doors this time last year when their board of directors and investors looked at the future cost of development and, well, they kind of couldn't justify it. That left the only solution with Makita, who currently sells a $99 coffee maker that runs on their 18 volt LXT battery platform. Now, coffee's always been a popular drink on the job site, so why isn't anyone else stepping in to fill the ox void? Or is there really one to fill? If you read the reviews of the Makita, it's often pointed out that their five amp hour battery only makes 15 ounces of coffee before it's empty. I don't know about you, but 15 ounces barely makes me tolerable, let alone functional. True story. So what do you guys think? Should Milwaukee, DeWalt, Bosch, or anyone else make a job site coffee machine? And well, how much would you pay for it? I'll be looking for your answers in the comments. All right, enough talking. It's time for some actual work with Rob Robillard. Hey guys, how are you this week? We're great, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great. We're here at our barn project. Things are moving along great. For this week's tip, I want to talk to you about setting up your job site materials, not moving materials unless you have to. You know, unless you have a lull or a machine on the job site, you're not gonna be able to move materials around easily. Hauling materials is hard on the body and it's time consuming. So a couple of the tips. First of all, when you set up your lumber yard delivery, have them set up your drop in the way that you're gonna use it. Stack in the way that you're gonna use it. For example, you want your sill plates, your, uh, your rim joists and your floor joists, your plywood, then your walls. And you want it stacked in that order so the walls are below all that stuff so you're not moving the studs. Additionally, uh, if you have a boom or a lull or some sort of boom truck or, or available, you can have lumber dropped to the second floor deck or moved in certain places where it makes the most sense. Try to deliver your materials as close as possible to where you're going to use them. And then lastly, cut from the stack. And what I mean by that is cut your rafters, your studs, your joists, and your plywood on the stack. And gang cut if it makes sense. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Hope this helps, guys. Have a great week. Thanks, Rob. Last week, we finally got the ending we deserved from the Skill Builders Multi-Tool Showdown, which you can watch right here. Special thanks to Skillsaw and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right, we'll see you next week.